morning and happy Friday to everybody out there and welcome to Beyond the Sim. I'm Sean Cole with my co-host Billy Strange. How you doing today, Billy? Great. It has been an amazing week here for weather. Yes. It has been incredible. I We don't really get a whole lot of rain in May <laughs> and it has been torrential downpours. We've had localized flooding in the whole nine. It's been I had the air conditioner on like two or three weeks ago, and now I have the heater on. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it is, but it's like the best spring in the history of California, at least in recent memory, that's for sure. Yeah, it's, well, it's wreaking havoc on my allergies, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> so it, uh, a little confession if you're watching, it is actually right now Thursday for me and Billy, and we are pre-recording today's show because Billy... Well, it's maybe, all my fault. It's your fault. You Maybe when we get to uh, talking about what you're up to, maybe you'll tell us why we're pre-recording. So uh, any comments, you know, feel free to talk amongst yourselves in the chat in, in relation to what we're talking about. But we will not be here to respond to the chat live because it is a pre-recorded show. So with that said, Billy, what have you been up to? Well, I'll just tell everybody to begin with that the reason we're recording early is... As the majority of people know, I'm in a band and we have been recording. I finished guitars like two or three weeks ago and I've been waiting for another slot to open up. I actually had something ready to go for next week, but they had a session open up for Friday and we played some shows. We played a show in San Jose and in Davis this past weekend and everybody was asking either can I buy a CD or where can I hear your, where can I hear these songs? Where can I hear your music? And I'm like, uh, we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's obviously imperative that we get this done as soon as we can. But again, we are taking our time with trying to get exactly what we want out of the recording. So it's my fault. I'm going to be in the recording studio for, oh, 12 hours tomorrow. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. So well, that's a, that's the best of reasons. Well, it's it's a pretty good reason. I'm pretty excited about how it's turned out so far. So keep my fingers crossed. Hopefully it stays on the same trajectory. Other than that, I had talked about trying the Subaru and the Ford from the prior Dirt Rally 2.0 update. And now this past Tuesday, Germany was released. Again, another callback to the old yep. Dirt Rally. Uh, I need to, I tried the longest stage. That's typically what I do because that, pardon me, that typically includes everything, right? Usually they kind of take that long stage and then they break it up into shorter stages for other, for other courses, quote unquote. What I found interesting about this was it, it had stages similar sections to the first dirt rally, but it's missing a part if I'm not mistaken. And I need to go drive the shorter stages. Cause I swear there was a portion that was kind of like in an airfield and you did all these quick little like back and forth through this. I thought uh -huh. I could be misremembering, but a different I rally. <laughs> that, yeah. I thought that I could swear that it was the Germany rally and I didn't really pay attention to it till I got all done. I tried the group a launch on the long course. I was like at the time, like fifth made some mistakes. I'm sure I got knocked way down the board, but at the time, you know, like a couple hundred two, 300 people had done it. And I think I was fifth and I, I got done. I was like, that was kind of fun. I like that. And then I realized, wait a minute. I never ran through that one section with the planes and stuff. So I don't know if they actually put that in one of the shorter length courses, rally right. runs, or right. if that's just not in their period, or maybe I'm, I'm not remembering it correctly. I thought that's where it was. Regardless, it's fun. It feels a little different than the first dirt rally. The, especially with the new updated force feedback, uh, it's not perfect, but it does it does a decent job. And boy, you can really feel it when you get off the like the tarmac and there's like even some dirty parts in it where 
the car slides around a little more, and then there's some <laughs> cobblestone. <parts>. Yeah, it's <laughs> dirty. Dirty. Sorry. <laughs> Pun unintended. And then there's some, like, stone or brick or cobblestone sections that obviously give you less traction. So all that is really fun. I really like in that particular rally, even though it's not gravel, there's some monster in that direction. At least there's some monster downhill sections that are followed up with like either off camber or really tight turns that you got to be on top of your toes that if you just break just a hair too late, you just go sliding off Uh into the ditch. So I, I enjoyed that particular rally quite a bit. I tried the, this is the mod for AC VRC Bradley eight, uh-huh. which is obviously speed eight. I'm not, this is version one point. It's like their third or fourth update with the car. And I tried this on Tuesday, I want to say. So it was at that time, the latest version that they had. It's a paid mod. I tried it and there's just kind of, I felt the same way about the 20, the modern formula NA cars. Those are the 2018 cars. Uh I really liked the formula 99 cars. I thought they were great. The 2018 cars, I felt lacked something in understanding and predictability. You know, with a car like that, I understand that you're not going to slide around a whole bunch with it. Right. But there was, it was very, how do I say this? Assetto Corsa. Where Assetto Corsa kind of, for me, has this odd feeling like some of the cars, not all of them, but some of the cars don't have a great way of telling you when you're at the limit with the back end of the car. Okay. Um, Mod cars seem to be a little better at telling you this. So I, there's a lot of mod cars that I really enjoy. Some of the official stuff feels like that. And that Formula NA kind of felt like that. And then somebody did an update to it, and it feels more predictable to me. This kind of does the same thing. The back end of the car just doesn't doesn't feel like it. the tires are really ever grabbing a hold of the track. Uh-huh. You obviously have traction because at points you're not spinning out all the time. But it, to a lesser extent, it almost suffers from the Forza Motorsport problem right now where if you're just a hair too aggressive with your turn in, the back end breaks loose. So you almost drive scared right. instead of being able to push the car, which is something that even iRacing in past, I've always criticized that I have a real hard time pushing some of those cars to the limit because I, I just can't feel the car and you're just always on the edge of fighting a over uh, a break loose oversteer yeah you snap know. oversteer kind of thing yeah yeah so i hope they update the car i don't know maybe this version is how they meant mean for it to handle it doesn't again for a downforce laden car it doesn't feel like it has downforce a whole lot it just It's an odd feeling. I'm not talking about getting on the throttle. I understand there can be tire spin. I don't have an issue with coming out of the corner, and if I'm too aggressive, like the tires are spinning, it's just on my turn-in, it it just seems overly sensitive. Uh-huh. So, I don't know, maybe that's the way the real car drove, and if it is, well, I don't like that. <laughs> I, I want, I, what I tend to do is when I don't feel like I'm meshing well with a car, I tend to go and watch in car and exterior video to see of the real life counterpart yes and it looks like the car sticks a little better than what's being portrayed to me Uh uh-huh i'm sure other people have found the car great and they're really fast with it it's just not clicking with me right now so uh it's a little unfortunate because i was really hoping to like that car what else did I do? I did some, I finished up some rounds in VRC, uh, actually won a rally cross race. That's only like the second race I've won in VRC. This is the remote, you know, VRC pro. Yeah. RC car. Um, finished second in, uh, I think it was like a touring car class or something. So I'm having fun doing that. And it's mainly because it's competitive, but I get to race when I want to. Uh huh. So I'm, I'm enjoying that, that part. Is that because there's a lot of people racing it? 
Uh, so what happens is they give you every week ish, they give you so many races that, that can be run. And it's as really, it's almost as many as you want. Some are qualifying and then they put you in a main event and some are just straight hot lap challenges basically. Okay. But over the course of X amount of minutes. So if you're not familiar with RC racing, you have typically a qualifier is they give you X amount of minutes to do so many laps and then they split you up and then they have three divisions. There's pro sport and club and almost all of them. I'm club and a couple of them. I've just bumped to pro and you have to be within a certain percentage of the average lap time of the fastest person. Okay. And that's what dictates what class you drop into. Right. And that's carried out the, it's kind of like I racing where it's carried out the, over the course of like a season or, you can always bump up. You just can't bump down during a season. Right. So I've, I've been having fun with that because I kind of wait till the last day because you typically have multiple tries. You have like two or three tries in a main. You, you'll have like six to ten tries for a qualifier, which, again, is not uncommon in RC racing. Back okay. when I used to run, you didn't get multiple tries at the main. Uh -huh. You just got like two or three qualifiers, two heats. Nowadays, they try to do it a little more golf-esque where they, they give you kind of multiple tries and they take your best or your best finish or whatever. Um, or sometimes they'll do like a deal where depending on your first two tries in the main is where you line up in the final of the main. There's different ways of doing it. This is just, it takes your best time result in the main. But what I like to do is download the other drivers and then put them on the track. So I have somebody to race with. So it feels more like an RC event. And it's just nice. in the fact that I can do that at my own leisure and still being in a, what I consider a competitive environment instead of having to line up times, you know, oftentimes I can't do that because of the way my schedule works out. No, I totally so understand nice that because I do the same thing in project cars too. Like one, of, you know, and, right. and this kind of leads to something we're talking about later. But I, you know, I'll fire up a, a, one of their leaderboards. I'll grab the ghost of somebody from the top five, and I will race that ghost to see where I'm doing it wrong, where I can gain speed, and it's a lot more fun than just straight up hot lapping. You know. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, I could not do the ghost and just hot lap and improve, improve. But right from the get-go on Project Cars 2, I'm using the ghost because it's more fun. I agree. All right. What's uh, cool about the VRC Pro is uh, when you go into a qualifier, if people have already run, you can go into a practice mode and you can see what they're doing. It's, it's basically a non-ghosting, but it, you still go through them. So you can see where you're deficient. Yeah. When you go do the qualifier, it doesn't let you do that. You can either do a target, and it just gives you uh, literally a target, and it goes red or green every lap. So if I want to just try to get into the A main, which is the top 10, I might pick the 10th fastest guy, and as I'm running, that'll go green or red. So during your qualifier, you don't get to run against anybody. It's uh -huh. just you on the track, Okay. but it's got this red or green target telling you how ahead or behind you are. But then when you go do the race, it's cool because you can race with – it's literally downloading everybody's replay. And you can pick who you want to. You can pick nobody. You could pick everybody. So I pick as many people that have run in my main. Uh -huh. So sometimes I'll have a full grid, and there's nine <laughs> cars trying to focus on one car while the other nine are out there running. I don't know. I, I enjoy it. I have fun. I wish there was – in the final you could have collisions on. Mm -hmm. if you wanted to but again that obviously wouldn't net you the best time anyways so it's kind of like a give or take yeah but yeah I, i'm enjoying doing that what else have i run anything else i don't think so i think that was it i think the last two, couple things i tried were the were the bentley and the uh germany rally nice so yeah cool what about you <laughs> Um, I did a lot of endurance practice this weekend. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, that was mainly, uh, that's really, I'm kind of getting to where I'm trying to trim how much I touch. 
because I'm trying to get just really dialed in for Lamal. Uh, and I'm starting to get there. And I'm not maybe getting as many days in the car as a lot of other people, but I'm trying to really focus my time and energy so that it's it's maximized as best it can be. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with her going on that so far. Uh, and then beyond that, I did some rec fest because Monday fun day and you know rec fest it, it, well we'll come back to that topic um <laughs> and then i did something a little different i bowed out of a race yesterday so yesterday was the double header bell bell aisle yes on i racing for lionheart um you know you know i feel as a competitor you have a few different obligations in as a competitor and number one is to come prepared, especially the more serious the event. You know, I mean, like we do rec fest. I don't care if you're prepared. You know, even well, yeah, it's just spontaneous practice races. I might not care, but like when you're in a real racing environment, I think there's certain code of conduct and obligation that you kind of have. And I feel like you need to show up prepared. Number one, number two, you need to finish what you started. Like, I don't like people to get a little damage, a little scratch on the car, and they're going to call it a day. And it's like, you know what? You started the race. You do what, you, you do what they would do in real life to finish the race. Um, I couldn't put in the time needed to be at the caliber of the league that that is. I mean, there are a lot of leagues that I might run in that I could be like, you know what? I know the layout. I'm not a liability, so to speak. But... I'm not competitive. Uh, yeah, I just, I had to bow out. I just, I, you know, between, it was my birthday the other day, and I had birthday stuff going on over the weekend, endurance race over the weekend, or practice. Um, and then my actual birthday was Tuesday, so I really didn't practice on Tuesday right. for Wednesday race. And then yesterday, I was still doing my other projects, which I'll get to in a second. So I couldn't, like, practice all day. Anyway, so yeah, I bowed out, and it was like one of those interesting moments, I guess, as a sim racer, where I'm like, you know, I'm I'm calling in sick to my job, you know, um, but I just didn't feel ready, <laughs> you know. So yeah, I just didn't. well, I understand that. I mean, that's kind of how I approach it. That's why I don't typically, if I haven't had enough time, I won't compete in an official i race event. Or even like the endurance. Like I wanted to run the endurance race. Like I had talked to a couple of the guys about it in right when everybody was done with the last one. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to try this. And then all of a sudden the month started shaping out the way that it is. And I'm, I could probably do it. But I don't feel that it's fair that I didn't, I haven't put the time in to if I ran the race without mistakes, right, then it'd be amazing. Right. But if I run the race and have a mistake and I don't put the time in, just like you were saying, well, then that's a problem. Yes. And I don't want I don't want to ruin somebody else's race, whether it's our teams or somebody else, because I didn't put the time in. And so, yeah, that's typically why I don't get to run a ton of multiplayer races. Because I at least want to take... <laughs> Well, with an event like the endurance race, I want to, I'm going to put a lot of time in, even though I hate practicing, <laughs> I'm going to put a lot of time in just to know fuel strategy, what the tires do. Not only that over the course of several different runs during the day, during the night, we had, now we have the whole time change track right. cools off, like all that, like we did for Daytona. I tried everything. I, we put a lot of time in, so yes. I'm going to put the same amount of time in. If I can't do that, I'm not. I don't feel it's fair. Sure. That's part of being so, on that understand. kind of environment, that kind of a team. And, and you know, and in a, in a serious league, even though it's more of an individual event, you're now... You affect other people, though. Yeah, well, and you're making that obligation to that group, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I bowed out, uh, which worked out fine for me in terms of... I've already missed some races because of my schedule, uh, travel schedule. So I've already missed... I'm not a contender for the season, I am right. a participant in the season, but I want to be a competent. And at the same time, because I'm not a contender, 
I don't want to have a negative impact on anybody else's world, you know, because if they're making every race and all of a sudden the guy is only coming to half of them, puts it in a wall and they get caught up in my nightmare, that's not cool, you know. Uh, and I'd have a t completely different attitude, by the way, if I had made every race. Part of it comes from the fact that I'm already right, out that of you haven't, Right. You know? um, if you... Well, speaking of that, slightly different tangent, but you made me think about it. When you did your karting stuff, when we're talking about being little, having little experience or preparation, so thinking about it on the experience part, when you did your karting stuff, did they make you wear the X on the back of your helmet or on the or put that on your uh, number plate and make you start in the back for X amount of races or anything like that? Did they do that at all? No, not at all. Um, but there's probably two reasons. I went to a level that most people don't start at. So okay. at that level, I don't think they were thinking so much rookie, you know, novice mentality. It's like, man, you paid to be here. Um, you know, so, I mean, that's basically it. So no, I never had to do any kind of uh, identification as a new driver at all. Um, but the way I did it, funny enough, I should have been because even though I was fast, my amount of wheel to wheel time was so limited that every race, like I was a hero at every track I went to in practice, even in qualifying. Um, but the minute it went green flag, I was like a fish out of water. I was in the deep end. It was like, oh my God, I've never done this. And it was like some of my early days of karting actually were flashback to the day. I don't know if anybody remembers the day they learned to drive a real car. Um, now I'm a city boy. It's overwhelming. Yeah, I'm a city boy. So like I didn't get to drive my dad's car down the country road or any of that stuff like when I was 13. When I was 15 and a half, I got my learner's permit and I live in Los Angeles and it's like – any street you pull onto is massive amounts of cars at high. And so it was just like, it was panic. I remember vividly to this day, that sensation. And I remember like at least my first three races in a cart, I had that exact same, holy sh, what am I doing? You know, what, what, how, how, yeah, it was it was really weird, and I should have been labeled as a rookie because I almost feel like for those first three races in particular, I was downright dangerous. Um, and qualifying farther up, like maybe if I had had a coach or somebody else involved, they would have given me more race practice without being in a race, or they maybe would have had me run a couple of races that weren't very important and purposely have me start gotcha. at the back you know <laughs> like hey you need to you need to make a few clean passes on guys that you can get around easily so why don't you start in the last place because that's what i kind of that's the pace and approach i take sim racing more often now um and it's like you know i'm not sure if i came in on short practice i have a it's like cool you know what i'm not going to qualify I'm going to, you know, I know there are a few guys that I'm going to get around regardless because I'm fast driver. So there's a couple spots. Then I'm going to get up to a couple of guys that maybe I have about the same pace with the amount of laps under my belt that I have. But I'm still learning, right? So give me 10 more laps and I'm going to be even faster. So I'll get around a few of those guys. Yellow flag, jump up a couple spots for talking oval, you know, or right, in road right. racing, just that persistence and you know, next thing you know, I find myself running in 10th spot and running competitively with the guys in the top 10. Um, you know, and I never really got that with karting. It was like, scary, scary, scary. Okay, I got this. I'm fast. I know what I'm doing. I know how to race. I mean, it was just like a different kind of doing what I know how to do, you know? Yeah. I was just curious because when I went and did the sprint car stuff, I was required to run the rookie flag but they kind of watch you and figure out, okay, you can start where you qualify or we need you to start in the back. Right. And apparently they thought I was okay enough to start 
like where I qualified, but my very first race at Placerville. So I raced the night before, had some problems in Chico, went to Placerville. I started on the pole for my heat race, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> right. I don't want to be right here. This. Well, you know, you sit there and you have this perspective from the the grandstands, like, oh, I it's so easy. You do X, Y, and Z, and then all of a sudden you're sitting in the car and like, man, I hope this thing doesn't take off wrong because I'm gonna wipe out the whole field if, right. I, if it goes wrong. You know, I proceeded to go into the first turn, get two sideways, slide, you know, got sideways, slid down the hill, hit that uh, Placerville's got a berm that sticks up on the infield. I slam the <laughs> infield with the left front tire, pack it, pack the wheel full of mud, and the whole car's shaking, and I'm just getting, I mean, these guys are just railing by me. Like, I know they're thinking, idiot, as yeah. they're going by. But I had to run a rookie flag for three races. And in karting, when I went to do the karting stuff, IKF had a rule that you're supposed to wear an X on the back of your helmet and on the back of your by next to or on your number plate or something like right, that. Right. And I just said, is this something that I have to do? And the guy that I that had brought me out says, oh, this guy races sprint cars. He knows how to run around other people. It won't be a big deal. So there were other people that had the X's that had to start in the back, but they vouched for me. I think I practiced. I mean, I did it like right. a practice day so they could actually see that I wasn't a complete see, I kind of had sponsors along for the ride as well. Oh, okay. Like, so part of my story in karting, there's so much fear involved in my karting life. Um, I bought the freaking cart, not knowing anything about karting, not knowing anything about anything. And then I basically lived at Willow Springs karting track like uh -huh. three, four days a week for, I don't know, like six months. And the guy who ran, wow. uh, I think it was called KRC back then, but the guy who ran the big karting school out of there would come out and watch me. And like, I don't know, it was only like three months into it. He's like clocking me. And I'd come in and I'd be working on my cart and I'd be talking to him and he'd be like, so when are you going to race? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You know, and I'm just like in my own freaking head, you know, and he's like, dude, you know, he's holding the stopwatch. He's like, you really need to be out here racing with us, you know, and and I just was so afraid to dive in and I just like there is a perfectionist side of me. And so I don't care what the clock says. I'm like, but I missed that apex. I still am a mess in that breaking zone. I still don't know, you know, and it's like, I'm just so hell bent on this perfect lap that maybe gets back to why the first few races were kind of scary. Well, by the time I raced, I was running as fast as anybody runs that track. I was a Willow Springs pro, you know, and so it was like, but I had no experience of being around any carts of my level because the only other carts that would show up regularly would be like, a regular 125 moto and like i have the horsepower to just blow by them anytime i need right so you just scrub a lap and you're gonna get by them clean every time well you, you guys know. have you have what an extra six or seven yeah yeah something I think like that like 35 and we're 43 you know um, yeah it was something because i run stock i run the stock moto 125 shifters and the other the icc's the, I don't know if they call well, them that anymore. No, yeah. ICCs are actually slower than we are. Okay. Um, but the the one that does the big, like, race in Vegas and stuff, their class. Right. I forget what the name of the class is. But it's a 125, but they're allowed to change. It's the cylinder head that's different. Right. And they get, like, an extra four or seven horsepower or something like that. So they're those guys, if they know what they're doing, are tough to keep up with on what the tracks that we, we run. Yeah, when, when I was running are the 125 motos were way off our pace um i mean like when i did the california speedway race they ran us as a mixed class which sometimes they do sometimes they don't and there was like 120 carts in the grid yeah and 90 of them i think or 80 of them were motos and then the back and and they all have water pumps so yes. it was actually this was the coolest day of my life i have to admit we're gonna forget sim racing today um, oh, <laughs> California Speedway, uh, we're running the Roval and they send the moto guys out first cause they have water pumps. So they do their recon lap 
and then come down and the start of the race is going to be on pit lane heading into turn one. Yes. Okay. So they all pull around. Well, they didn't even let the, the ICC guys go because we have no, our water pump is built, is driven off the axle. So they didn't even have us fire up our engines until those guys were like halfway around. And then they sent us out to go next. They did an, an inverted grid and I was like the second top qualifier. So I'm starting in the 119th place out of 120 uh, car crap. grid with 80 of them being in, in slower cars, well, carts, you know. And so anyway, uh, the race go. they send us around. And, and so we have to stop. And then as soon as they get all of us stopped, they go green because we'll all overheat if we st- stay on the, 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 the grid. And anyway, when it went green, everybody went and, you know, carts can stay on the low, on the, the, the inside, not up on the banking. Yeah, on the apron. And, and they could stay on the apron and because it's only halfway through one and two that it turns into right. the infield. And there's like just this cluster of carts, just like, like six wide in the apron and just like, just brake checking. And, and I'm like, this is nuts. So I just go up onto the banking and just zipped around everybody, and then at the last second, I pinched it in. And at, like, the end of the first corner, I had essentially jumped up, like, 70, 80 carts, which is oh, this. Geez. And it was just, like, at the end, it was like, excuse me, I'm coming in. You need to make room for me, too, you know? Oh, it was it was a little dickish, but it was, like, I don't know. That was my best race. That was the highest race weekend. I finished second in both days, and... Overall, I got the most points for the weekend, but I got the second place trophy. Right, right. But nice. It was, it was my best day in karting in terms of actual Ooh. driving. Per- that I And one more note. It was a couple other, like, bucket list things. This part was I blew my motor the moment I crossed the start-finish line. As soon as I lifted. Oh, wow. Yes. The second I lifted crossing the start-finish line uh, for the end of the race on day two, the piston stuck, and I was dead. Um, which oh. led to a bucket list item, though, because – they had the big fire truck uh, that California Speedway owns. <laughs> Not fire truck, but the fire safety truck. Okay. And they threw out the uh, the like the the you know flat four inch rope that they tow cars or indie car yes. guys put them on uh-huh. the hoop. I've and been they, on that a couple times. And they had me wrapping around my steering wheel and tow me all the way around. And I'm like, yep. this is awesome. I'm like getting the real deal tow treatment. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yep, I had so, I did that a couple times. So in par- you know parlaying this into sim racing, that's a very good parallel. Practicing a whole bunch, but never putting yourself in race situations. That's why I say you can practice all you want, but the best practice is actually going out and running races sure. and making you adjust your line and watch for things, you know, when, uh, mm. and this happens to me in real life racing, but getting into those first three, I had a thousand laps from the outside line, trail breaking, perfect apex, perfect exit. And then I get into the race and I'm on the inside being held to the inside. I have to figure out a new braking zone, a new corner yep. speed, and I'm not going to be able to roll out of the corner. And I have no clue what that speed is. Not one clue as to what that speed is. And it happens to me in sim racing too. Because I can, you know, especially endurance racing, we over practice. And it's like, well, what is the outside line or the inside line? Yeah. Um, yeah. The um, other thing I wanted to ask you is, do you think it would be beneficial if a multiplayer system had a rookie system? Not just a rookie as in you start in rookies. But if you're new to that series or class, even if you're a veteran of, let's say, the MX-5, but now you're going to run GT3 or GTE, you're getting exposed to different tracks at different speeds and things like that. Does that warrant you being a rookie for X amount of races in that particular class and having to start at the back of the grid? I that w- kind of thing. I wish they had that. Cause I think that's one of the problems when you look at the rating systems is that they're very single line mentality they're very wide open yeah and and it's like man you could be a great open wheeled racer 
and at the same time be a terrible GT racer. And and maybe uh-huh. I'm a little extreme in that, you know, but but I mean everybody has their strengths though. Like you do get guys that are good across the board, but then you also have people that you know, I'm not, I'm going to say it, I am not the best typically at an open wheel road racing car. I'm just I I need more practice. I'm just I often don't push the car hard enough to get the downforce to work. But if the car has a lot of horsepower and maybe isn't hooked up so hard, I'm a little better. Right. But, you know, I'm not that good in, like, any of the formula cars in iRacing. They just they don't feel good to be number one. I don't mess well with them. So I can see how it would be nicer to have it a little more narrow, specific to the thing. And that's that's actually circle back around. That's how RC Pro, uh, VRC Pro works. Is it's specific to the actual class, not an overall thing. Right. So, I was just curious. We've I, gone I, diversion heavy right now, but I was just curious if, if if you had ever thought, or maybe it would be a good idea to have, when you get into another class or try another class that you basically have a rookie stripe on and you start X amount of races. From the back of the grid. You until really should. I mean, whatever threshold you meet. Yep. And then you can start competing yep. otherwise. Um. Yeah, I agree. I think it's it's relevant. I mean, and it works two ways. It's a reminder to you that you're new to that series, and everybody else has been there a while. So you should be a little humble, right? <laughs> and then it also is a reminder to all those guys. Hey, if there's one guy who might come down off the hill and hit the berm. You might want to give a little half extra car length around that guy just because you don't know what might happen, you know. Um, these can be unpredictable. For me, it was going into the corner on the inside. It's like, well, the guy behind me better get ready to really slow down because since I don't know, I'll right. tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to go through the corner and into the outer lane, guys. Bonsai, I guarantee yeah. you that that's not going to happen. If anything, I'll be accused of being – granny slow through the corner which is exactly what i did and then you know i soon found myself back in the grid uh, sure. <laughs> um so, so what uh, else have you been doing what else and then everything else was really hardware related so i wanted you know doing what i do my rig i'm looking at it right now um is ever changing and i'm really good at changing my gear and still driving with confidence like i've been doing it a long time i've used a lot of gear i some of it's even predictable because i've used that gear before you know um but i really wanted to get my rig back to that is my rig you know don't touch it so i unwired everything put my wheel back on put my seat back on um got rid of the h pattern because i'm not planning on using it um and just got everything perfect, and and that was a big deal. And then I got the gas perfect. throughout the sim racing world just happened. You're not you're taking your H pattern off. <laughs> I'm willing to go to an H pattern when there are a few conditions met. Um, until there's a servo lockout that won't give me the gear in terms of the gate, until the car has given me the gear. Because uh-huh. I've never driven a car on planet Earth where I got the gate without getting the gear. Uh, I'll okay. get a grind and a no, you can't have the gate. But I've never been given and the not gate. Not just a full blown, and, right? Okay. So, so until that's corrected, I I have very little interest. And then the other is, I and I'm all for these things, by the way. And then I need there to be a setting that allows you to host a room where H pattern is required. Required. Yep. Yeah. And, and then I, I really, I would love to race in a group of, of dudes who want to run in some old cars that belonged in H pattern. Someone was giving me a hard time about H pattern the other day, and I was in a GT3 car. I know. I saw that. I was like, that doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Why would you? The game won't even let me. I racing will no. not even let you. <laughs> no. It's kind of silly. Um, so, okay. So the H pattern came off. Yeah. And I, I have my button box on and i'm getting everything mapped and just i'm my label maker died so i'm gonna go buy a new label maker to just get it all perfect and 
I'm and I redid the wiring so it's like one perfect loom. Um, so I'm super happy about that. And then I got my VR rig finally. Like I last night I could have driven it, but I had to make dinner and then I got tired. But um, this is what I did with my whole birthday. I, I cleaned and organized and rewired and built rigs. That's what I've been doing all week almost. Um, but I have a next level racing uh, chassis with the next level motion platform. Oh yes. With the G seat, the Sim Experience G seat on top of that. And it's specifically built to be my VR rig. Nice. And I'm like, oh, I think when I get the seat and the motion dialed in with the VR, I might. That sounds cool. Be pretty sold on VR. Yeah, and I got a Thrustmaster TGT on that rig. Oh, and I have a load cool. cell that's going to go in the pedals. So I'm there you working go. on that too. So yeah, it's been a, a lot of hardware, endurance, and wreck fest to blow off steam. And then I played some Robo Recall um to not sim race and i, I happened to yeah do the same thing i was i played the latest tomb raider i got it for christmas and right? i finally decided oh, i'm gonna throw this in so i've been doing the same thing and i bought skyrim for vr and they said oh, i think might have been last year's vr game of the year and i do not approve of adventure movement games where you can walk a direction that your head is not facing like i know like when you're practicing sports we'll do our sideways movement drills but for the most part when the human being moves where their head head and eyes are facing is where the body follows you don't run in a diagonal this way i mean you do but in vr if you're playing wide receiver and you're running this diagonal route and looking over your shoulder for the ball you get motion sick like crazy and like right. And I don't, I'm not a motion sick guy. So it's like, but that game instantly, it's like, oh, it do allows they, that. They don't have the warping. Game. They don't have the warping in it or anything. They do, but it's weird how it comes and goes depending on okay. where you are in the game, I think. I haven't, I mean, I, I only got through the first scenes and then I got sick and I put it down. I was going to say, barely got through the first scene before you're Ralph. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, I'm not going to get a headache doing this. So I put it down and I'm like, I'll cool down and I'll go back to it. And I will go back to it. I don't. I don't know if that game's for me. I mean, like, at I some couldn't get into Skyrim. In my life, it would have been, but like, I don't know if I like adventure games like I used to. I want to, but I don't. And then all the scare you games, I'm literally afraid of, so I don't want to play any of the scary games. But they make the most <laughs> sense for VR. And so yeah. yeah, I still haven't really found my VR cup of tea outside of Robo Recall and Sim Racing. And flight sim, but I don't do that much. Anyway, uh, that's what I've been doing. All right. Well, On I guess we news. can go to the news. I, again, I apologize. I have massive allergies. I'm trying my best not to like sound horrific. So again, I apologize if it's you sound it's pretty annoying. Good. I'm, I'm trying. To, well, it's mainly like sniffling and that kind of thing. It's just I can't breathe right now. <laughs> Billy, do you have a most hated track in life? Oh, most hated track and for whatever reason i mean is there just some track that you're like Man. sim racing i would say people are not gonna like this answer i don't like monza how come track is boring as hell to me i just it's always those chicanes if you got rid of the little chicanes the you know it and just follow the natural flow of the circuit i might like it more right but with those stupid slow down i just can't stand it right they seem you know, very always... unnatural like like yeah if you were to just talk about flow right you know it's like this makes no sense for this track for this to be right here the way it is you know. I mean, like corners like the parabolic and stuff, I enjoy because they're they're kind of a tricky corner. They're not super hard, but they're they definitely do take a technique to get the most out of it. Yeah. So I don't mind those turns and like, forgive me, I don't know what the name of the corner is after the front straightaway that right that sweeping right, right hander. I I like that, but the chicanes and like the it's such a start. You've got this flowing track and it's such a start stop just inserted to slow the cars down right i just it i 
I kind of, I, that's what kind of turns me off about, um, help me out, spa a little uh -huh. bit, uh -huh. is when at the very end, they, you know, they freaking artificial. Right. I mean, remember when they had all those different versions where they moved that like further down and up, like those just bother me. Imola d does the same thing. Mm -hmm. I enjoy Imola much more now because they don't really have that anymore. But for a while, Imola had all these, you know, coming towards, I think it was coming towards the start finish line. They had all these chicanes. Right. And, so I was like, eh, like give me the natural flow. One of the coolest tracks that I thought, and I understand it was really dangerous, but before the Red Bull ring was the Red Bull ring. And then before it was the A1 ring and all this, the Osterreich ring. Uh -huh. No, is that right? I think that's it. Okay. I'll take your word for it. It's Osterreich because I'm thinking, I was thinking I said Osher Sleeman or whatever, however you say it, but it's, I think it's Osterreich. Yeah. The flow in that track, it just, it's so cool. Right. And then, you know, these tracks get neutered over time, and I understand it's for safety and stuff like that, but I miss the or, circuits were designed in a way originally, and most times when they get altered, I just don't find it as appealing because it's an artificial thing to make the track safer. Right. Again, which I understand, it's just a, it, it kind of ruins the the original what the designer was envisioning the track would be, whether they were following the natural landscape or whatever. And uh, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of most of the Tilkey tracks either. And right. they just don't have all these odd, sharp angles to them. And passing opportunities are kind of difficult sometimes. And those don't do anything for me either. But Monza is like my most egregious. Like I actually just skip. There's ever a... If I'm doing a series or anything, if there's a race at Monza, unless I absolutely have to do it, I skip it. <laughs> you know, not a favorite thing. It's funny that that's the reason, and I love your reasoning behind not liking uh, uh, Monza because one of my favorite, actually, two of my favorite tracks are here in California. Um, and maybe it's because I've been there a lot, but I love Laguna and I love uh, Sonoma. And the reason I love both of them is. I feel like if the track surface was made of water that it's like so perfectly laid into its surroundings that it would have been the river that would have run through there. So when I look at Sonoma and the right. way it goes around the curves and over certain ridges and around other ones, I'm like, man, it's it's so natural considering that man came in and paved this ribbon along this, this path. And, and I feel the same way about Laguna. And – like you said, if you were to remove, especially the first chicane from Monza, uh, which I understand why they did it, you know, sure, I get oh, it. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, I. Yeah, it's not that I don't understand. It's just, meh. Well, and there are other things you could do. That's not the only option to slowing down cars, right? I mean, you, you right. could have done some other more elaborate thing that would have taken more space. But, but. It, it is very flowing track other than that spot and it feels like it like kind of belongs in the same way i'm describing i mean at sonoma it's so clear because of the way it has ridge lines and and these little foothill ridges throughout the track that it, it's just perfectly avoiding you know um and then even you think of the final chicane at sonoma i think they did a pretty good job of they finally had to do the same thing they had to slow people down going into the final section because it was a you know death curve, so they added the chicane right at the the drag strip essentially. Um, but it's not a eh, eh, chicane, <laughs> you know. It's like it's a little mini right left, not a chicane even. Um, but yeah, all right. Well, one of my well, weird. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say in thinking of that theme, you mentioned Laguna. So do you think that because the original Laguna did not have that longer double apexing left-hander for turn one, right? it just went turn left and shot up the hill. Right. That whole inner loop was never there. And it was, if you want to watch something scary, the GTP cars, when they were running, did that original design 
right there, at so, least in that part. So by the time they get to whatever that left is six now, they're doing like 200 miles an hour. Oh, they were hauling. <laughs> and the guy that got me into karting, he ran a kart race there, and he tangled with another guy, shot off, and is. He always says, you know, you crash really good when it blows your shoes off. Because his <laughs> shoe like flew off when he and he hit the hay bales into the guardrail and it goes off the other side there. Right. And he was hanging over the guardrail. So did this go around the lake or was there no lake there? The lake was put uh, in to make I don't think there was a lake. I don't think there was a lake there. The lake was added to make the interior part feel. I'm not natural. gonna say for sure. But that interior section, if you go back and look at like early 80s and, and prior. Uh-huh. Re well, remember even before that, when they were running Can-Am, the pits were on the grandstand side. Right. They were not over there. So it's funny how that doesn't trigger the same feeling for me. I would prefer to run that other loop in sim racing because I have no, I, there's no danger for me of if I right. crash, there's no, no big thing. Right. Um, but it's interesting how taking that, or even I would venture to say at road Atlanta, that chicane, you know, that slow down on the back straightaway, that's that hard left, right. And then you go up and over the hill Uh huh. that was never there. Right. That all that veered to the left and <laughs> followed it totally bypassing. That was just one massive straightaway. Right. That doesn't give me that same feeling, though, that Monza does, and I'm not quite sure why that is. Well, because the so Monza just, one, an... to me, the Monza one more so than any other we've mentioned, feels almost like, you know how to rally stage, they'll usually throw in some hay bales or yeah. something? Uh -huh. It almost feels like it's this, oh, okay, everyone come through the, the, the cattle walk, one by one, um, you know, we got to group you all, you know, we got to narrow you all down and zipper you into a single file line. And it just, it it feels so blatantly man-made. I mean, obviously everything we're doing is man-made, but it just right. doesn't feel natural. It just feels artif more artificial than natural, I guess. Yep, yep. yep. All right. Well, the reason I asked you that actually gets back to the news. <laughs> oh, yes. I know why you said that now. Because well, my least favorite this? track <laughs> is Silverstone. And the reason and now I now iRacing is just going to make it that much better for you. Yeah, so they have this video here, Silverstone coming to a week 13 near you. I like that wording, by the way. I thought that was pretty clever. I, I, I give you – that was probably Kevin Bobbitt who did that. Um <laughs> But anyway, the updated Silverstone. Uh, the reason I do not like Silverstone is totally 100% on me. I cannot remember if I'm on the front stretch or the back stretch in Silverstone. And so turn one is a lot faster than turn – no, it's the other way around. Turn one is a lot slower than turn nine or whatever the other front stretch right-hander is. Anyway, that is the whole thing. I can never remember which of the two, and one is almost flat out, and the other is if you do it flat out, you're going to die. Um, and so what happens inevitably at a race at Silverstone is at some point I will lift for the wrong one. Wrong, yeah. And go gung-ho through the wrong one at least once per race. Um, but that's me. I mean, there's got to be some other identifying mark on the track that after all these years that I would have been able to find and put to use and be like, ah, see that, see that, that is the slow corner marker. But no, I haven't. Yeah. I, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I just don't care for the version that's current. Right. I really liked the old, what was it, 90s or 2000s version of Silverstone? I thought that track had a lot of character to it. Uh huh. And it feels over time it's just become more homogenized and it's lost some of its character to me. Yeah. It's not that it's a bad track. I just, it's, it's okay. Um, I, again, it's kind of one, a track like if I don't have to run it, I won't. I just really prefer the character of the older. The older circuit, uh, but that's obviously not what we have anymore. So. No, so you point. can't accuse it of being flat, but somehow, for but such it a... lost some of its elevation. It feels like yeah, and it 
it just has no personality. Like it's so no, it's very bland vanilla to me, and it shouldn't be because it's actually a really remarkable yeah. potential. You know, like I, I mean, it's like there's wow, sections it... I love in that track. You know, the left, right, the whole S's, and then into the one. You know, I love sections of that track. Yeah. Um, I think there was just more. I found it more interesting with the older versions. I think I'm going to have to learn to love Silverstone. I think I will. But there you uh, go. maybe this new version. So that's the whole point here to look at the updated Silverstone coming yep, to Yep, you're getting an updated Silverstone. So something everybody's been asking for. Uh, so it's been long. I'm pretty sure it's long overdue. Yeah. If I remember right. Yeah, I, I believe so. All right. Uh, what else? Next up, we got an update from Ritza. So those are the developers for uh, Automobilista, and then the they did some they did a bundle for R Factor Two, and they're they're letting us know that there's an update coming for the R Factor Two content that they've put out. Right, some big DLC changes pack. and fixes. Yep, but the major thing is the two additional Imola versions of '88 and 2001. So those are free of charge if you have already bought it. On to, they had a final update in DLC plan because they kind of kept extending the life of Automobilista while they were working on their new title. Unfortunately, what they were trying to get done isn't working out. So instead of what they had originally planned, it sounds like they've got a licensing agreement with Motorsport Vision to now include Donington Park and Snetterton in the... AMS season pack. So those that already own the season uh, get this, get those two tracks when they come out at no extra charge. There's hoping for them to be ready by late July. And of course, the thing that everybody's really wanting to know, or those of us that enjoy Automobilista, is where the heck is the new title? I think it was supposed to come out in what 2017 or 2018? Maybe it was 2018, <laughs> 2017. I don't know. It was something like that. And uh, they've had some in-depth workings and challenges. They said they are getting really, really close. In quotations. Actually, they don't say that, but that's I'm gonna I'm gonna say that as generically. That they're getting ready. It says, stay tuned for an announcement to be made in the coming days on our social media pages for this new title. Well, that's big. Yeah. I mean... So I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm really curious after Automobilista, like, what direction they're going to go in. If it's if, just going to be another, like, better update with, you know, we could speculate that they're using the RF2... Uh, engine or are they going to make a more concentrated title like maybe kunos has done with a set of course of competizione that's a great thought i i i'm just eager to see what they're gonna do if it is with r factor 2 i mean when i think of r factor 1 i love r factor 1 r factor 1 also did require going and finding the right content right getting it dialed in staying away from the wrong content and then Riza comes along and is like, you know what? Here's your pay a little extra, get our version of R Factor. It's tried and true, you know, the series that we're giving you, but you're, you know, and you don't have to think about all the modding stuff. Here's a bunch of really good quality controlled content. And they were really the best as far as R Factor 1 goes, uh, as far in that direction. And so it's like, well, that could be really nice for R Factor 2, even though they're at a really good pace of content right now they don't have that modding community support they had with r factor one that at this point in the timeline had already exploded what was available for r factor it seemed like a lot of people shifted to a set of corsa because mm -hmm. it was so much more friendly yeah to use because the amount of mods uh, race department said something like they have uh, just celebrated it was like ten thousand or something oh, like wow. that i mean it's a ridiculous number uh I listen. Shout and, out! I listen to their podcast. And, but <laughs> well, and that was a uh, the kind of numbers that you would have seen for R Factor One, but we're not even close right. to that for R Factor Two. Not even, not even close. No. 
Speaking of podcasts, you just mentioned that you're uh, listening to the race department podcasts. Yeah. Hey. We have a a podcast, don't we? We do. (laughs) This gets turned into a podcast. So if this is too much to see our our mugs on YouTube or maybe you haven't tuned in or don't have a way uh, of listening to us on the go, you can hit us up on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher. Any of those podcast platforms. I need to down. I listen to podcasts when I do travel, which I seem to do a fair amount of. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to download one of ours to like listen to it in those ears, like you know, because I do listen to a fair amount of podcasts, but I've never really like listened to what we sound like. Um, it might be horrific. I don't know. <laughs> I, I always, I always cringe because it's just one of those things that you're like, oh, why did I say that? Too many pauses. Too many this. Too many that. And then I try to listen to other podcasts. I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's not that bad, but I still could be better. Yeah, and so can But they. anyway. Because when I listen yeah. to the other ones, they're not perfect. That's what actually makes them kind of cool. It's, I guess that's kind of the mentality behind this show and podcast is that it is one step down on the casual scale from... Yeah, it's a little more freeform. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Uh, this is kind of cool news, and I got a bunch of different pictures and videos to show here. I talked about it on the show. It's big news right now, and that being grid. Um, So now we're in that speculative period where we all get to we all get to uh, uh, wish for the things we want it to be, and ignore or listen to their PR and what they say, and hybrid that all together to the point where when it comes out, we can be a thrilled or be disappointed. Um, That's my way of looking at it today. Well, you you say that, and what I found incredible, because I, you know, I brought these, I brought this up because I know you'd already mentioned it, but I wanted to talk about it because they kind of hit on a couple things that didn't come out in their original post or preview or whatever you want to call it. But one of the things I found fascinating was in Facebook, I follow them, and just reading the comments about why are you making a comment about something you clearly did not watch? Right. They've got all these comments about about oh god, make it a make it a grid reboot or not a reboot, I'm sorry because that's what it is. Right. Uh, make it a remaster. Well, it clearly isn't a remaster. It has mo- it has a modern Porsche and a Corvette or in a Ferrari and like it what? Yeah. <laughs> why why are you wishing for something that obviously it is not doing? And it just blew my mind. You couldn't believe how many comments were asking for things that weren't in the trailer or that it was obvious that it wasn't going to be. Right. Yeah, obviously this question. is modern GT3 heavy, right? I mean, well, yeah, it I'm wasn't looking at the video. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the thing is it wasn't like a question like, hey, are you guys going to support X, Y, and Z? Or, hey, how many cars are you going to have? How many locations? It was things that were clearly you could take from the trailer and go, that's not going to be what it is. You know, the original one I think was, what was it? Race driver grid or pro race driver grid. This, it's got modern cars in it. It's not a reboot. Are these graphics from the trailer? Like, it looks so awesome that it looks, it's got to be promo, not gameplay. But then it's like, I'm watching the spin out of that car and it looked like gameplay. It's like, it's so hard to tell. It looks awesome. (laughs) I mean, I'll tell you that. It looks like you're playing Fast and the Furious almost. You know, like you're playing a movie quality, like a, not a movie, but an action thriller movie quality game. Yes. Um, Well, and that's kind of how the original grid was portrayed yeah. as this high octane little over the top well maybe sometimes a lot over the top uh some fictional courses where you know the impacts you were you were going to feel I, I think shift if i'm remembering correctly i think need for speed shift kind of tried to do the same thing right uh didn't so grid have those action moments where it like Went super slow mo and the audio got all weird because you were in the air. It in a might have. Was that this one or was that Shift? I, it might have been Shift. It also could have been like one of those uh, uh, street. Uh, I can't remember the game. 
anyway. No, it was either the it was either that one or Shift. Like I think you're right. It was one of those two, but um it's been well the first game came out in 2008 so it's been 11 years since i played the thing i can't exactly remember uh what i well did you have any what were you gonna say you were I, talking about i'm just saying there's actually kind of in my mind a semi void for this type of game um in our world um yeah because i feel a lot of the games that used to be in this in this from what i'm seeing in grid i feel like a lot of the games have either gone one way or the other from that point in the market um so even when i look at like a forza horizon which we talk about it's like yeah but they seem to kind of get pulled a little more serious in some ways with it towards being more about racing more about that than straight up fun and this like just watching this trailer it looks like it's like getting back to playing the games where you intentionally smash people and you know but at the same time you need to win so it's a racing uh you know uh, uh well sure it's yeah uh, yeah it looks super exciting um cool smoke effects i again i'm the wondering i i never know when i'm watching these trailers if it's gameplay or right cut scenes you know and it doesn't, I don't um, think it says gameplay on it, but I did. Well, we'll get to that. But what I, what I thought was interesting is that that trailer came out and I was like, oh, well, that's cool. Like, I liked the first grid. I liked Autosport, even though it was really bro E, you know, oh, get, you know, you got to get your act together or that, that kind of stuff. You know, the, I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that commentary and stuff kind of just, that, that kind of turns me off. But I like the idea of the progression. And so I thought it was going to be like that. I felt like the very first grid was a little more grounded than some other ones, but it, it's got a lot of arcade to it. Right. So I would classify that as an arcade game. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't even say it was a hybrid. A little, again, the first grid was based a little was a little more grounded than like number two. Number two was, I think, really went arcade. Yeah. Autosport went back to being more grounded, but it still had that characteristic Codemasters feel to it with the handling model. Uh, whether you like that or not is completely up to you. So that's what I thought when I saw the trailer. Then I saw the two trailers that were posted on Race Department on YouTube and watching the gameplay. And so you're getting like little perks for your driving line. Right. It, not unlike some of the other systems that a Forza or even a Gran Turismo will use for like their safety rating and stuff. Like it's evaluating how well you run around other cars. You're going to have the flashback system again. So again, if those things make you think of arcade racing, that is definitely what this is. What I found interesting was first I saw the blog post from Codemasters, which says some things that don't get relayed in the trailer. But what I first want right. to go over is the IGN article. Because okay. it's kind of like a PR speak. You know, this is why. But they really cite the first grid as the thing that they're going after. This is a reboot, not a remake. Uh, and they have they talk about the AI. They have 79 out of X amount of AI, 79 individual AI for you to race against that have a memory that will form either a teammate or a rivalry. You can go clear to um, a nemesis if you start crashing with a particular car, which changes their aggression and their speed level. So you've got some interesting ideas going on here. Then you go over to the blog post, and the, the line that I found interesting, right, First, they talk about choose cars from GT Touring Stock Muscle Super Modified. <coughs> pardon me. And more across race types, including circuit, street racing, or street racing, ovals, hot laps, point to point, and world time attack. Now, they don't mention drifting, which I thought was actually one of the highlights of the first grid. Now, maybe uh, that's just something that you constantly are getting bonus points for. I uh, maybe and it doesn't it says super modified i have 
not sure what that means either. Because what I consider a super modified is probably way different than what they're considering super modified. But the next couple lines are interesting. Pardon me, I gotta cough again. <coughs> oh, I'm so I'm watching the work in progress while you're coughing, and it's at night. Because at first I was watching daylight, and I'm like, oh, obviously those were cut scenes, not gameplay. But they're at a street circuit that is wet, and it's at night, so all the cars' lights are on, including the brake lights. And outside of maybe the like lines off the brake lights, it it's pretty cool looking. I, I got to tell you, this looks fun. And what I love about this is what I'm reading into everything that I'm seeing when they're talking about the you know AI and all. What I'm seeing is something that I again I love, and that is this could be one of the better single player career mode games. So forget what you can or cannot do with it online. But I'd be really thrilled to have we you and I talk about it all the time. You know, I play Robo Recall to not be in the rut of sim racing, um, sure, or to get out of the rut of sim racing. And I don't mind if those games. When I asked you way back when if you were cheating on sim racing by playing Virtual RC, um, I don't mind if the games that I played to have a diversion from my sim racing life are games like this with big achievements big rivals uh, 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 a a long storyline or career mode to keep you enticed into coming back for more um trophies you know we've talked about you know i don't know if the grid will have you know but winning the car you know gran turismo when the car comes out and they take the cover off i'm like ah i gotta play more you know (laughs) right so yeah i mean uh, we'll segue kind of into that in just a second here cuz you're you're right this is this is a diversion but it's not something that has to be exclusive to an arcade experience right uh the thing that struck me interesting is this next paragraph where it says grid strikes the perfect balance offering risk and reward for every type of racer handling is incredibly responsive with a learning curve that appeals to both casual arcade gamers through to the core simulation racers. Well, that's an interesting line that rings of dirt four to me. Right. So I'm, it would be interesting what they mean by that. <coughs> oh, pardon me. But it also, to me now, different, different family or different company, but it also is exactly what I would say about Wreckfest. So in the best of light, I think that's totally achievable. Because I know people who play Wreckfest on a controller and get a lot out of it. And I play on a direct drive wheel and I get a lot out of it, you know. Um, Right. So, you know, I think that's the the biggest first step in any driving game is is doing that. And if they accomplish that. But, Dirt 4. um, (laughs) Well, and I'd see it. That's what I don't. I don't really know what they they mean by this. Does that mean that it'll have that level difference in physics, or is it just that it'll support wheels as right. well as you know? So that's. I just thought it was an interesting line to put in there. Uh, they go on to say progression is rewarded through liveries, player cards, teammates, achievements, and driving accolades. The player cards. I'm not. I don't know if that's a microtransaction thing or what. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'm not sure what that means. Mm -hmm. But, again, stuff to keep you going. Liveries are always good. Although, do you ever notice that most of their liveries are kind of crap? Yeah, yeah. They never really have, like, great-looking liveries. I just, can can we kind of, like, loosely base them off of some real-world stuff? I don't know. It just, it all, (laughs) like this, like this kicker one for the Firebird here. The black and yellow? I'm, I'm, ugh. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. It's a little quirk of mine with the Codemasters games. Uh, AI drivers push the player to their limits to earn a place on the podium and ultimate victory in the Grid World Series Championship. Uh, Interesting, in the IGN article, they talk about, again, those 79 or so individual AI. Right. So that'll be interesting to see how that works. A realistic damage effect can affect both the car's performance and handling, and too much contact with the same racer will see them emerge as a nemesis who will stop at nothing to get their revenge in the race. They also <laughs> yes. talk 
<laughs> right? They also <laughs> talk in here and in the IGN article about Fernando Alonso was a consultant, but also he's going to be in the game as a as a rival, and yes. he will have specific challenges so that I, that are to him. So, so that's I mean it's interesting. I and I have to eat some words here because on Wednesday <laughs> or Monday show I kind of clown because I had read Fernando Fernando Alonso to consult with them on Grid, and I'm like, who cares? Like that's the title that I don't need your input on. Go help them with right. F1 2018. Go help them with Dirt Rally, but this one I don't need the F1 guy helping with. So I, and, but I was all wrong, um, and I had it so wrong in the best of ways because maybe that isn't what he's doing. But he's offering himself as a character within the game, which I'm a big Alonzo. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm a Alonzo fan. So when I'm playing that game, and all of a sudden he pops up and he's like. Can you beat me? You know, it's like, okay, I, I don't know if I can. And he turns into Arnold. <laughs> but, and it's also going to include his FA Racing eSport driving team. So they're going to be some of the nemesis in-game. You know, I've been saying it for some time. It's just a matter of time till somebody's wearing <laughs> some sim racing dude's jersey. You know, and I'm wearing my Michael Conti jersey, uh, you know, running with JR Motorsports. And, uh, um, cause there are heroes. Well, this is the first step them being emulated as the people we challenge yeah, I mean, in game, you know, that's pretty cool. So you mentioned the diversion games, right? Yeah. And cycling back around to what was the spark for me? to kind of take racing automobiles in a game more seriously than perhaps I might have before. Well, that would have been Gran Turismo. Uh -huh. Now, I know we go back to that, and I, I like I said, I play it usually once a year just for nostalgic reasons. And the handling is obviously not as robust as it, we once thought it was when this was, for me, I didn't have a PC. This is the only thing I had. So I had a PlayStation and a control, you know, a gamepad. And to me, it was like, wow. Like this is, and I can upgrade the cars and I have to grind to get the next car. I mean, I would pick the R32 Skyline in a used car dealership. And I would keep that car until I couldn't upgrade it or get it to win anymore. Right. I had a connection with that car. And I wanted those other cars in the game that were elusive, like the in the license tests and in the upper tier cars. And they were ran and there were some that were random colors. And then right, we went into right. GT2 that had randomized cars. And so that gave me an incentive to race. That platform made me a fan, made me understand that there was a Japanese market with these super GT. I think they were GT500 back then, but I didn't know those cars existed. Right. I, I I had no idea. I didn't know what a Skyline was at that point. I was 17 years old, I think. I didn't know. Right. I had no clue. Maybe I was 18. Those made me a fan. And as it progressed, the need for something that felt more and more realistic. Again, we go back to it now. The things are out of scale, terribly out of scale, you know. He kind of ignored that. It, it it gave me a reason to keep racing. And I know it was AI. And I know that multiplayer does fill a lot of that void for somebody to continue to keep racing. But I just wonder... With a title coming out now like Grid, and where somebody doesn't have the fortunate circumstance like myself, or even like yourself, to be able to purchase several sims or games in a year, where somebody has to save up all year for one or two titles. Right. Do, like, what keeps you motivated in a sim? Especially with what we have today where there's nothing, even 
Project Cars 2, even Dirt Rally, like it doesn't really give you a sense of investment. So I think that's something that we're missing, but in a game like Grid, and although it's admittedly going to be more on the arcade side, I think that's a game that scratches, that'll be a game that scratches that itch. Sure. I completely agree with you. And and I think that that is one of the core elements of gaming. So when, you know, and, and even though we think of ourselves as being different, we're sim racing, sure. Um, we have hardware we can buy, no one else can. Um, but we are still gaming. And one of the core elements of gaming was somehow the game had to somehow, even going back to coin-operated days, taunt you into There's wanting to achieve more. You know, high scoreboards, you know, back in my day, come on, everybody had a three-letter code that was theirs, you know, that you wanted uh -huh. it on the, every machine because everybody knew you were SMC. Um, you know, and... and um, I think that that is something that sim racing forgets that we are still part of the gaming world too. And this video gaming fascination for some, I think there are some who can look at the competition side and the automotive culture on its own and be captivated and drawn for years. But again, are they going to get fatigued without something taunting them? Um, Knowing that we were going to kind of touch upon this, earlier you were talking about VRC and downloading the race. And I thought, man, how cool would it be if I could have downloaded the other night's VRC race with Coanda versus so-and-so versus so-and-so in the, you know, in the GT3 cars and then oh, and run racing, against yeah. that grid. You know, and, and I'm never going to have the talent to be in that series at that you know because that's split one essentially right right um but i might be able to tag along with that grid and maybe by my third or fourth running i'll have learned the line from that guy in the back of the grid and maybe moved up a spot or two but it's like little things like that to me are enough to create this want and need i mean like i love all the racing i'm doing but every time, and I wish I did it more, every time I go do a leaderboard challenge, I am baited for more. Because I finish my run and I'm like, 380th? Ugh! I did and the same I run when I was again. doing that yeah. with the Germany rally. Yeah. I was like, that was a terrible run. <laughs> you yeah. gotta try that again. And, so and there, there is an inherent loop that I think we have within ourselves to... You know, if you're competitive, you want to get to the net or get to the next level, race with somebody again. Um, I think that for others like myself that enjoy that little extra, it's too easy for me to bounce from sim to sim to sim. There's nothing that, unless it's the only one that I've purchased. There's nothing to keep me grounded with that particular game and or sim. Right. You know, Project Cars 2 tried to do it with a career mode. That, it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't. Like, there's no investment in that. Right. And the same thing with the Dirt Rally careers. Like, there's no investment really there. Those, it just doesn't feel the same. Those careers feel more like a restriction-based career more than a congratulations you've Award. achieved type career right uh in gran turismo getting back to the original right um if i did one of their challenges and i got a bronze and a vague memory of how it used to be but you'd see your bronze and you'd see the two missing trophies right because you don't have them and to me that's like yep. bubbling skin like, ugh. especially when you know that every fifth or so gold one is going to get me a free car. Because, well, yeah, to the me, original a reward... one you had to, yeah, you had like races within a group that you had to do. And then there were races that were championships. And you had to win. Yeah. To get the car. Yes. Yeah. The entire championship. No, yeah. There was no anything else. You had to win. You just didn't. 
accrue mileage and get a car. Right. Which I that's fine, but I think the allure of was trying to find a way to either and granted at some point you get an OP car and you just crush the field. Right. But I did that, but then I would always return because there was always another car that I wanted to buy. There was always another car that I wanted to try. And then what I would do is I would make it hard for myself. I would try to run a car that wasn't, wouldn't outperform the other guys cars. Like I, I had right. to work at it. Right. So I just, and Forza just doesn't feel the same anymore in that regard. Number one, I, I don't care for, I mean, I have more fun with horizon series than I do with motorsport, but it, it, over the time we've lost that I remember when I got disappointed when I would when I remember I'll never forget it motor I think it was Motorstorm that did this to me one of the first games I bought for the PS3 I worked my butt off trying to beat that game and when I did I got nothing <laughs> for beating it and that was like the first time I had never I always got stuff for winning right what do you mean I don't get anything? No special nothing? The end. And, Fade and black. That's, <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of how it's progressed. And PC Sim Racing is is that. There's really no reward for doing X, Y, and Z. And I know the re part of the reason is people say they don't have enough time. Which I might argue with. Right. Or that it's a multiplayer game and everybody needs to have access to the same stuff. Now, that I understand. Right. But I still miss... I, I still miss that sense of excitement or wondering what you were going to get next. Where can I get that car? You see it in the dealership, but you can't buy it. That was the thing right. in Grand right. Turismo. Like, I looked at everything. Yep. I was like, how the hell do I get that car? Right. And this was, you know, I'm, I know this is old man thinking of old stuff long ago, but I, I, there's nothing. I miss the, the thing that keeps me invested in something. And when I, we talk about playing other games like a day's gone, like when I finished the resident evil two remake, like I'm working on tomb Raider right now, there is a hook that keeps me going. And it's mm -hmm. because the payoff at the end that right that mystery of the unknown i mean i played days gone i finished the story i was like oh well that was pretty cool and i liked it's very rare but i liked that game enough where i was like well there's some other stuff to do and all of a sudden these things started popping up i was like wait there's more to the story and there's like a secret ending had no idea right but as a reward for continuing to play, all of a sudden this secret ending comes up. And I was like, and the ending like blew my mind. Like it completely changed everything. I was like, whoa. Right. And I purposely like stayed away from spoilers and things. But I had that same, I remember having that feeling with Gran Turismo 1, Gran Turismo 2, even some of the Forza games. Like, how do I get that? Sure. Well, and you get to that I moment. I have to win to get that car. And you even get to that moment. You're like, hey, you know. Not everybody who plays this game gets to even experience this because they didn't put in the time or right. have the skill. And, you know, you, there, you you get to feel really – that's a special moment if you're, like, a big fan of a game that you're playing. And, and, and I agree with you. These are the kind of things that, that – when I look at all the big sims in our PC world, not one of them is really doing that. Um, or anything of the sort, um, like, like, and sometimes they're underutilized. Like I'll tell you, I'll give iRacing a hard time here. iRacing has this really deep, like rewards thing, like achievements and things that you get, but they yeah. do nothing to tell you that you've got them. So unless you go deeply diving through the navigational structure of iRacing's website, you wouldn't even know that you'd racked up an award for 10,000 miles uh -huh. or whatever. And they're really cool awards. And I've always talked about things that could be automated into iRacing without changing anything about the sim. Like, leave it alone. Just let me come in and give it an interactive facelift that will 
gain you membership and gain you uh, uh, more people racing. And but how cool would it be if? And it could even interrupt your race. I wouldn't even care if like halfway through a race there was a ding 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 and a little thing popped up in the corner and you're like what the fuck was that? You know, and it's like, oh, you just hit an achievement, you know. And then after the race, instead of just like having to somehow find my search results if I didn't hit open that page right away, it would have automatically popped up and saying, congratulations, you just ran 10, 000, your 10,000th mile. I think the only thing that does that is the license. It kind of yes. does, you know, where yes. the screen comes up and it tells you that you got a license. And, and, and then, you know, even then, having those... an option, you could turn it off. If you're not into that, like I think one of the best things when John and I were talking about stuff is John's not a John Sable's not a gamer right so to him that stuff doesn't mean anything to him he doesn't care right so I I understand people come from that spectrum so give it give people the option to turn that stuff sure. off but I would argue that in these other games they there were modes for that like arcade mode right if you want to have the multiplayer low mode completely unlocked with the all the vehicles, but maybe not all the livery choices or stuff like that, then then do that. Sure. Yep. That's Here it fun. is. It's there for you. We're not restricting yeah, you. you. We're just access saying every car. We want you to have fun with our career mode. But if you are really just want to cut to the chase, here you go. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I just uh, so it'll be interesting to see what this is, and I, like I said, I know this is a bygone error that that developers feel like they people don't the the, pro, the good and bad thing is there's so many things to pick from right right and so with so many things to pick from people stick with something less and less developers see that and then go okay like we have to find a balance here you're gonna get some people that like RPGs, for instance, want a hundred hour game because that's the only game they can buy that year and then right. you have other people that buy multiple games that don't you know their their lives don't allow them to put in a bunch of time so we want to be that's why microtransactions existed we want to be able to give them the opportunity to although i still don't understand purchase x y and z to get right. them in there so i don't know i just uh it, i'm cautiously optimistic about the game i think it looks cool i'm intrigued i will probably buy this because i was i was a fan of the first grid <laughs> I thought I it was one really of the greatest. I, I vaguely remember saying things like, "This is one of the greatest driving games ever made." When Grid came out, like, because there were things about it that were just like so perfect for what the gaming arcade. Did you guys do a racing. review on that? Yeah, I vaguely I think remember. You guys did. did. Yeah, yeah. Because we I, really I think I remember it. you saying that actually. Now that you repeat that line, I think yeah. I actually remember you saying that. And there were a few annoying things. It wasn't a perfect well, yeah. game by any means. But and I think the force feedback was like very mediocre in the beginning. Um, I'm going by memory here, and that was ten years ago, if I'm not mistaken, for Grid original. Um, eleven, yeah, ten, eleven years ago. So, but it was so refreshing because even when I think of like a Need for Speed, there was still always something straight laced about it, you know, and it's like. Everybody was always trying to stay very grounded in this racing sim mentality, and I just feel like forever we're always being pulled more that direction. And I love it because that's where my real heart is. There is big John Sable part of me where it's like all I care about is the racing, the competition. There's absolute – yeah, there's you absolute know. value in that. But on the other hand, man, I love – I mean we play Wreckfest because I love crashing. I love taking people out. I love – Doing the sides of gaming that we get to do in shooters that, that, you know, yes, I shot you in the head. That's right. You know, and I mean, I don't know what it is, but it, we enjoy these things. And it's like when I get to play games with that kind of mentality behind them, I get to play them for a completely different reason and get a completely different sense of enjoyment. And some of it being the storyline, some of it being the achievements or career mode or the unlocks. And some of it being the gameplay that allows me to be that racer that, of course, I would never do in sim racing. Like, I would never pitman maneuver somebody to right. get a position. Yet, we play Wreckfest, and, you know, when you play with your friends, that guy is more rewarded by the group than the guy who won the race, right? The guy who got the, the best takeout is by far the bigger champion than the winner of the race. Mm -hmm. And... and 
I feel like other than Wreckfest, that that market abstruse simcade. Because sure, there are a lot of arcade games that let you do whatever you want to do. You know, uh, twisted metal type games, right? Yeah. But one that looks like, smells like, sounds like, and feels like a racer, but its heart and soul really is a twisted metal. Um, and I just feel like this is in, and, and I'm reading a lot into what they're saying, right? You know, admittedly, they're not promising this out of the game. I'm hoping for this. I, out of I the think game. it's. I think it's a good guess especially when they say that it's a reboot they're looking at the first grid yeah like i think we can come to a relatively good conclusion about what this game's going to be so yeah again yeah. i'm looking forward to it i think was this original flashback uh is this where the flashback for Co code masters got created it where might you, have been it, it was one of wall. those yeah it was <laughs> one of those games it grid might have been the first one i'm trying a, to remember a, a near death experience in the car it might have been dirt it might have been dirt uh, i'm not sure might, but might have been the original dirt one of the greatest movie effects in a driving right? game ever like i just i love that i just it it and again it's an option you don't have to use it right and i like games uh, that reward you for not using it. Yeah. Yeah. So, Absolutely. yeah, I just, I, I thought this was, I didn't know we were going to go this long. We actually had another topic lined up, but we'll save that for next week. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that um, one next time. So what do you got going on this? What are you going to be doing coming up? Well, again, I'm going to be at the recording studio tomorrow. Uh, I apologize. I, w I was looking forward to making the truck race like running the truck race, especially after the last race that I had right. where I got up there and then got tangled up in an incident. Uh, so sorry to everybody that's running the truck race. I won't be there. Um, and other than that, I don't have a whole lot going on. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of at a crossroads with my channel. I think uh, I've, I've laid out some new plans for myself. Uh, not ready to announce what, that will entail but i'm i'm working on this i really enjoy doing this i usually we're here doing it live which i really enjoy i like interacting right. with as many people as i can uh, so that kind of satisfies a couple of the the things in my head that i that i like doing about this hobby um, there's just i've got to figure out a different outlet for things and, certain things yeah, I just I'm 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 trying to figure out what that is. So I'm I'm just kind of that's why content on my channel's been slow for the last couple of weeks. I've I've kind of been in a, a rut's not a right word and I'm not burned out, but I definitely feel like I need to change my approach. Do a little reorganization. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been, that's I've what been I'm in a work similar on. boat. I've been in a similar boat um with the channel. But it's ever changing times in the world of entertainment, in the world of YouTube in the world of streaming, uh, in the world of sim racing. I mean, we're yeah. really, I mean, things are really accelerating. Well, you've been doing this for longer than almost anybody, and I've been doing this for four, six years across various different platforms. platforms of, sure. But always on YouTube, just, you know, my channel, Inside Sim Racing, back to my channel. And it's, so it's, I'm, it's all been a learning process along the way, and I'm not done learning. I'm not right. done. There's no book. Mistakes and, <laughs> right, There's no I'm not, how I'm to. making mistakes and, and trying to figure out what I do and don't like to do and how I can do something better and improve it. And right. sometimes I just feel like if you're doing the same thing as everybody else, maybe you should just, maybe I should just find something that I, I really enjoy doing. And then I enjoy doing what I'm doing, but maybe I should find a more, substantive way of putting myself out there right that doing sense. it the billy strange way yeah not that i wasn't doing it before but maybe maybe taking it a step further how about that right yes 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 i totally understand where you're coming from there i totally do so that's that's yeah that's what i'm going to be working on all right you? um I will be doing the truck race and looking forward to it. We actually had a really good practice race just for the fun of it last week, and that was just the practice race. It was fun. I didn't get to do that one either. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the truck race. Those are always good. Really good group in that 
series. So it's like, you know, you talk about cautions. It's like this group actually can run pretty clean together. We had, <laughs> I mean, really, we we ran pretty good the first race. I mean, I know we had that big yeah. melee at the end, but but that's going to happen. But yeah. And then uh, I'm going to double up endurance practice this weekend. Um, yes, I, good I've luck been, to everybody. Good luck to you guys. <laughs> been doing I'll all be of my in. practice uh, in super hot. So I need to oh, like do some slick. whole. Yeah, I've, made, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. done all my practice under the worst of conditions. So it's only going to get better. Um, and then hardware. Um, I want to be driving. It's Memorial Day weekend. So, a uh, little nose. So, uh, tonight is the truck race, by the way, because we're watching this tomorrow. Monday is a holiday. I'm not going to be on the air Monday morning. I'm going to take okay. a three-day weekend. So, a little news nice. on that. But, yeah, I'm going to be playing VR. I'm, like, really determined to get this rig, like, perfectly dialed in. I have something I have to do on the PlayStation as well since I have the TGT on this rig. I can bring the PlayStation in here and use it for that as well. Um and yeah, yeah, lots of cool driving, lots of testing. I'm I'm actually a little overwhelmed with how much I have going on in the next week. So that's good though, because it'll keep me quite busy. So. Yep. And, oh, I'll be watching the racing this weekend, obviously. Wait, is the race the about... race this weekend or next week? It's next weekend. What? The race. The endurance race. Yeah, it's next I have weekend. No idea. It's next. It's weekend. next weekend. Yeah. Okay. But all the the five hundred. And oh, that's right. The, real the 500, life. 600, Monaco, like yes, all that's this weekend. That's right. Oh, this is a huge weekend. I'll be watching that. Yep. This is a huge week. I forget it's Memorial Day already. Like, even though I, I just know. said it, it's like, wait, it's this too is early. episode 22. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, Billy, thank you very much for this. It's been a blast. Yeah. Thank, yeah, thank you. Uh, Thanks like to everybody I... for watching and, and, uh, yeah, SoundCloud. Our podcast is uh, keeps doing better every week, so I appreciate that. And yeah, awesome. That's it. All right, yeah. Get out there, check out those SoundClouds. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up, tell a friend, and better than that, get out there and do some racing. Have a great weekend. But that's gonna do it for this one. This is Beyond the Sim. I'm Sean Cole. That's Billy Strange, and we'll see you on the track. See ya.